Hello, I'm Dr. Bruce Nicholson. For the past 20 years, I've specialized in the treatment of patients with a wide variety of pain conditions. For generalists and specialists alike, one of our most important responsibilities is to help patients make analgesic choices that are both effective and safe. Most of your patients are making choices about OTC analgesics on a regular basis. Many may not know that there are differences between acetaminophen and NSAIDs, and that these differences may have important implications for their health. Let's review the mechanistic differences between acetaminophen and NSAIDs. Differences that you may want to keep in mind when counseling your patients about OTC analgesics. In the central nervous system, both acetaminophen and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, are thought to provide analgesia through inhibition of cyclooxygenase and the consequent reduction in prostaglandin synthesis, thereby elevating the pain threshold. At peripheral locations, NSAIDs also inhibit cyclooxygenase and reduce prostaglandin production. These peripheral actions account for their local analgesic effects, as well as for some of the unintended health consequences NSAIDs can potentially cause in the heart, stomach, and kidneys. Let's look at three important examples of these potential consequences and the implications they may have for some of your patients. You likely have many patients in your practice who are on aspirin heart therapy. For these patients, use of ibuprofen can interfere with aspirin's cardioprotective mechanism. Here's how. Cyclooxygenase 1 plays a role in platelet function. Aspirin interaction with platelet COX-1 receptors mediates the cardioprotective benefits of aspirin therapy. In patients on such therapy, ibuprofen may compete with aspirin to occupy platelet COX-1 receptors, potentially compromising aspirin's cardioprotective benefits. The potential gastrointestinal risks of NSAID use are well documented. Keep in mind the following mechanism. In the stomach, cyclooxygenase 1 plays an important role in gastric mucosal protection. NSAID inhibition of COX-1 can diminish this COX-1-mediated protective mechanism. This can lead to GI side effects, such as irritation and bleeding. In fact, the second most common cause of peptic ulcers is regular use of NSAIDs. Note that the GI risks of OTC NSAIDs are even greater in certain patients, including those on aspirin heart therapy, those taking prescription NSAIDs, and those on antiplatelet therapies. Take these factors into consideration when you recommend OTC analgesics to your patients. Many patients in your practice may be on antihypertensive therapy. Less commonly, you may also manage patients who have some degree of renal dysfunction. In these patients, the possible renal effects of NSAID therapy can result in unintended clinical consequences. Let's take a closer look. Cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2 play a role in renal function. NSAIDs can affect both COX-1 and COX-2 in the kidneys. In people with some compromise of renal blood flow, NSAID inhibition of COX-1 in afferent renal arterioles can result in reduced renal perfusion. In distal tubules, NSAID inhibition of COX-2 can result in altered tubular sodium and water handling. In your patients with some degree of renal dysfunction, these renal effects of NSAIDs can potentially further compromise renal function and promote fluid retention. In your patients on antihypertensive therapy, these renal effects with prescription NSAIDs may be more pronounced and may result in undesirable blood pressure elevation and a potential loss of blood pressure control. In closing, let's talk about some acetaminophen safety considerations. When taken as directed, acetaminophen is safe for a wide range of patients, including 
those who are at risk for GI irritation, those with kidney dysfunction, and those on aspirin heart therapy. In fact, acetaminophen is recommended by the American Heart Association as a first-line OTC analgesic for patients with cardiovascular disease. However, when taken in overdose amounts, acetaminophen can cause liver damage. Accidental overdose can happen when patients unknowingly take multiple OTCs and or prescription medications that include acetaminophen as an active ingredient. Given that more than 600 medications contain acetaminophen, it is important to counsel patients on appropriate use. Key tips include always read and follow the label of all medications. Know the active ingredients in both OTC and prescription medications. Be aware that acetaminophen is sometimes labeled as APAP on prescription bottles. Never take more than one acetaminophen containing medication at the same time. And never take more than the recommended dose of any medication. Because patients may not be aware of the differences between acetaminophen and NSAIDs, your guidance is crucial. Your counseling can help patients better appreciate that their choice of OTC analgesics does matter and can have a significant impact on their health.